All right, guys. I've got a uh, a training game going, um, and it's against uh, Mikiel six nine six nine, rated thirteen forty eight, from I believe the Netherlands. Okay, this is an unrated fifteen plus ten, and I have played the Dutch against D. All right, so we have knight out here. So we're going to take all this from first principles, right? So the, the point of this is I'm trying to help uh, my opponent to improve when they watch it back. Of course, they may just kick my ass as well. Um, so I'm going to just play my knight out. I'm going to play the Leningrad, which is my... I'm going to tr trying to go back to this. I, I did kind of have some fun with this approach. It was recommended to me by um, my chess coach of the time. So here, what's the idea? So this looks like a kind of London. So accelerated London is when you bring the bishop out first, but I think standard London is knight out first and then the bishop out. So this is very much London style. What, well, London style? So quite often against the London, I would probably want to play d4 and try and control some center. And maybe, sorry, d5, maybe c5 and try and attack this, but I'm just going to carry on with my normal Leningrad setup. Leningrad. Now called St. Petersburg, obviously. Okay, and so, right, my opponent, I think, has now announced their intention to go Opa London style. Okay. So, Fienke to the bishop get castled. That's one plan. Another idea is this. Seeing as my opponent has not played the normal uh, response and target this knight, do I have to worry about anything? Weaknesses. Am I worried about this knight coming in here? Knight e5 is much more typical in the London. There's nothing wrong with me doing that, so I think I can go ahead and just play b6. Maybe do Fianchetto, Fianchetto, Figaro. Magnifico. And of course, yeah, we're going full on London. There we go. So, no big surprise. Solid, solid London. Now the bishop's going to come out here and the knight is probably going to come to d2. Okay. Now. The thing about my bishop here is, I'm looking down... A long dark squared pawn chain. Maybe e6 is flexible now. Could allow my bishop to come here. Is there any value in my bishop going there rather than there? I don't know. Let's put the bishop there anyway. Let's go London versus Leningrad. Interesting. Tale of two cities. And there we go. So my opponent just played. London, 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 London. Seven moves. Absolutely typical setup. But you know what? It's a solid setup. And any beginners out there, you know, there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with this way of playing. Now, one thing I do notice is this. So I would love to be able to slip Eddie up and through there. So I'm thinking D6, E5 takes takes and then I've really got a threat there yeah but do I castle first I think casting first makes a load of sense now there is always this diagonal here towards the king so you know my opponent can throw in a, a cheeky little check right so with Queen e2 what is my opponent's idea he might be having cheeky checking ideas. Okay, that's one thing. Bishop can't go there because it's defended twice. He might be thinking bishop here. Or he might be thinking castling long. But either way, I'm just going to push ahead with my evil plan, which is e5. Oh, hang on. No, because he's got, look, he's got one, two pieces looking at that square. And I would only have the one pawn. So if I push takes takes, 
then he can take with the knight or the... He's got three pieces looking at it. Air. Air. That's not very good. I could wipe one out if I want to just throw my bishop across the board and take out the knight. Then he's only got two. But even so, I'm going to want a piece on this square. Whether it's the rook or the queen, we don't know. I also have knight d7 or knight c6. Probably knight d7 is the more flexible. Okay, I'm happy about that. I'm happy he's gone this way. Um, okay, so I'm going to play knight d7. So what I'm doing is I'm building up my forces against here. So I've got one, two there. But he's got, in terms of defenders, one, two, three. So I need to add, certainly, one more here. Because if, so let's say, let's say, for example, I've got a rook on. Okay. So if I take him out, if I take him out, the queen's going to come in. Queen could go in there, but can't really do any damage because the queen and the rook right now are covering each other. Um, if I let him take, I then do have to do something about the rook. So let's think about this in terms of tempo and timing. I take, queen comes in, it's my go. Right, or I have my go now. He takes. I have to move my rook. What's the difference? The difference is. Uh, what is the difference? The difference is I I have my go now. Say for example that right. He takes. I move my rook, and it's his go. Versus, I take. Queen comes down. Then I move it. So the difference is this, right? Is queen there or rook there better for me? But after, let's say, I don't know. So he does that and I have to do this. He's got queen there anyway, right? And then my pawn is uh, slightly dangling. So, hmm. Another alternative is to ignore the threat completely and just take his knight out. <laughs> Which I kind of like. Or I could even move my bishop here. Or I could move my bishop here. So my dog is running around the house like a maniac. I can't really attack the queen, can I? If I go here and he, he can't push because I can just take them. If I go here, he can't put his bishop in there. Okay, I'm just going to keep my bishop on the diagonal. Right? That was two minutes, five seconds of... A lot of thinking to do not very much. But hey. So now his bishop's looking kind of stupid. He can't go there because I'll take it. He can't go there because I'll take it. If he goes there, I might just take it. I don't know. <laughs> Dang him. He's moved his knight. He has moved his knight. Okay. Now, for some reason, that brings me joy. Because now he's exposed the g2 pawn. Question is, I can't get my my resources behind that pawn. I'm inclined to move my rook and try and drop my bishop into the corner. I'm going to do that. I don't know what he's doing with this idea. Because he can't come very far forwards. Does he want to go there? That's a very long way round. Because now I can drop my bishop back to a8. Yeah? And it's just lurking in the corner there as a sniper. Which me likes. <sighs> Don't understand point of this move. I don't understand. I'm not going to kick it. Because it, I mean, it just retreats and then I've just weakened my pawn a bit and 
reduce the scope of my own bishop, right? But if he takes, I just take. So I'm going to drop my bishop back to a8. Yeah, my bishop of evil. I might have ideas. So basically, I want to get my queen onto this diagonal. Question is, which squares are available? Now, currently that one is not. That's out. That one's okay. Let's put it in green. That one's okay. That one's out because of the knight. Okay, now. So he's rooting his knight round. Okay. A slight problem here is that what he's done is he's removing junk from around his king. And that's kind of risky, you know? So one idea is knight here. Attack this bishop. Now, if he takes, I could take the pawn or I could take with my, my sniper. I don't really want to take with my sniper. Uh, what's he doing? I could go here and prevent his knight from going there. If pawn takes, pawn takes. That's fine. I see your pyramid and I meet you with a pyramid of my own. Um... It also allows my queen to come around here. So yes, I think that makes sense. It's doing a couple of things. Preventing the knight from coming into my, my directly into my space. I mean, he could come round, round the corner, and then to here. But from there, he's not really... So this, this, with a mating threat... <laughs> always got this in my pocket. I've always got that, and that is an idea. But he's made quite a few knight moves, you see, and his knights have ended up on the second rank. And look, look where my king is. My king is an awful long way away. So these knights are no threat whatsoever. Right? This knight's on the third rank, right? It's one step away from bang. Well, not bang, because it's here, but let's uh, get my queen here, right? Push the pawn, knight here, bang, you know? It's another checkmate threat. These knights, long way away from the king, right? So, yeah, that's the thing. Right. What are you going to do, Mikhail? Mikhail? I don't know. He's having to think. Okay, he's taken. I'm right, taking back. That comes with an immediate threat of, against b2. Also, I have lost my b pawn. My opponent has lost his d pawn. So I have two central pawns. He doesn't. What's more, my queen is now free. My queen could even come here, for example, and threaten to take this bishop and also threaten to go there. Okay, so I'm going to do this now. If he comes here, I can come here. If he doesn't, I can come here as well. Right, but either one comes with a checkmate threat. Okay, well that's check. Now, can I block with the pawn? No, I don't want to do that because I'm blocking off my diagonal. My favourite diagonal. So, just dodge out the way. Dodge out the way, mate. Dodge out the way. And I... Any time I put my queen on either of these two squares, bah, 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 danger. Go right here. It's the bishop again. So that there is something in chess. I think that it gets more interesting in the intermediate level and then goes away again later, which is um, hiding your intentions. Oh, he's blocked off the diagonal, look. Now, have we got options here? Takes, takes. No. Knight takes. Hang on, I've got one, two, three attackers because of my sniper, right? It's defended once, twice. And the second time is a lady. Hmm. 
Is, is it just a free pawn, though? There? If knight takes, I can take the bish. Um, I do undefend that, so maybe I should think about this idea. Just to defend the pawn. Now, but if he takes me now, then I my only way of recapturing is that. So I think, I'm, I, think I kind of have to take now, don't I? But what do I take with? I take with a pawn. Taking with a pawn kind of makes sense. It's a free pawn. Taking with a bishop threatens this knight. So he may just capture me, take back, but then I lose this. But then I pin the bishop. Okay. This, I'm threatening the bishop to. I'm going to take with the knight. He could take that straight away, in which case I'll just come here. Okay, now. Uh... I don't think he can capture with his queen because I have d5 supported by bishop, you see, with a, a fork on bishop and queen. Now, that pawn's hanging. Rook f2 e8 threatens the bishop and he can't capture that pawn. He's going to have to skedaddle. Okay, so... And I still have this now. Um, I still have ideas of queen here or here, and then push the pawn with threats, but then he can do that. Huh. Material is equal. He can't go there. Can't go there, there, there. Okay, so he's, he's run off. <laughs> now, is there a benefit of capturing the pawn and attacking this rook? Uh, it stops either rook from going to there. So I think it makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This pawn is well defended. Rook and bishop. Oops. Rook and bishop there. And I've still got ideas of being a nasty bastard. And queen here, there, but then he can just, just push f3. And my pawn's really a bit stranded. So how about this? Ooh! Traps the bishop. Don't tell him. That traps the bishop, look. He takes, bishop takes. He goes here, pawn takes. So that's no good. He goes here, queen takes. He goes here, oh no, no, he goes here, queen takes. d5 traps the bishop, and his rook was already in danger. Oh, hang on, oh, oh. <sighs> now I can't play that, because bishop takes, and if bishop takes, rook takes. Now. If that was gone, and that was gone, and that was gone, and Rook was here. And if I go here, he's got Bishop there. So I can't line up my checkmate threat now, at this point. He's playing well. If I do this... Knight's defending that, so I can't put my Knight here to cover that square. I could put Rook there to cover that square. And then push and grab the bishop. I mean, it's a, it's a whole bishop, right? Rook there. And I'm attacking this guy. I'm doing it. Doing it. Mm. Now it's six minutes on the clock. <coughs> Can't. <coughs> Can't get here because of my knight, thankfully. Otherwise it'd be a nasty fork. 
I would be absolutely forked. Um, here is a, another attacker on there, but it's too late because I get this supported <coughs> many times. Now, I think we have this. Yes. <gasps> He's moved the queen. He's got an escape. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Now, how about this? This and this. Oh, that looks, that looks nice. And if queen moves, I even have this then. I wish I'd put my queen on here, but... You can see the power of the central poor majority. Now if the queen moves, bang. <gasps> I love pushing central pawns, guys. They can just wreak havoc. It's like rampaging little, tiny little bulls. Oh. He's in some trouble, isn't he, now? Even this... Depends where the queen goes, because the queen's also got to defend this bishop, right? So what she got? She got there, there. Well, that one doesn't bloody work, does it? So what, what the queen's doing now is poking around my knight. <laughs> and we don't want that, do we, precious? So, I'm going to put my queen here and defend my knight. I have a threat, that, with a fork. I have another threat, this. Oh, but the queen's now defending g2. But the queen is not now defending that bishop. It's getting sharp at the business end of the game. 6 minutes 31. We do have a 10 second increment. Right? He's got 9 minutes 40 and he's using his time well. I'm liking this. Scanning down there. White is spending, you know, 20 plus seconds quite frequently on this. 50 seconds, yeah. Good use of time, right? Deep in the middle game, nine minutes to go, with an increment, yes. Exactly right. Okay, so immediate threat is that. Secondary threat is this, but then a three. Another threat is this with a fork. So <laughs> this is the thing, you can't avoid both of these problems, right? That's the problem. So what we're doing is we're layering up evil. And you can't go here with check, because of queen and knight now. Okay, now that's good, that's good, that's good. Oh, very good, very good. Hi, ever. Do I have this? Oh, damn! Damn! Look. Both rooks. I'm, I'm going to go here. You take my rook, I recapture. But then I'm going to get one of your bits. And if I capture the bishop, that comes with another fork on both rooks. If he takes that, I can also take with a knight. I quite like this. I'd li I like I like to move my knights upwards towards my opponent's king. Also, if this queen ever vacates the defense of g2, I have this hidden threat. Yeah, so what I was saying about um, kind of concealing your intentions. Oh, he's taken. He's taken the pawn. Okay, so surely now I take this. The queen cannot take the pawn. Right? So, what happened? What happened there? One thing that happened was my opponent took 2.2 seconds over that last move. Okay? That means you don't have time to sanity check. And this bastard. He says, oh wow, I missed that completely. Okay, so, right. The question is, were you aware at any point of the bishop queen barrage? Right, this. That's the important thing, right? Backed up with the bishop. So, 
these are the things that we have to be telling ourselves throughout the game. And let's we're going to run through again. I mean, it's a decent game. 27 moves, right? Um, so, Dutch. Okay, and you played London, 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 London. All good. Fair enough. And now castle's short. Okay. So, what you need to be doing is saying, okay, my opponent has fianchettoed his bishop. The bishop is looking at g2. That means that, um, okay. He says, um, I've only played once against the Dutch, so we're very unfamiliar with it. I mean, a really interesting game. Leningrad versus London is really cool. Um, I'll say I'm just, uh, recording my notes for you. Okay. So you have to say, to yourself, right? And this is when I talk, and when I talk out on like whether it's on video or whether I'm just playing and talking myself like a nutter, then I tend to play better chess. The more you talk to yourself, the more of a nutter you sound like, the um, the better you are. So from move nine, in, in fact, so the bishop went there on move six, right? From here, you have to say, okay. G2 is a weakness. And now let's see what transpires. Knight creeps up the board. Some aggression. I come out of the way. I've invested time in my plan to fianchetto this bishop, right? I've moved the pawn, put the bishop there. I don't, I don't want to lose my bishop, right? And this bishop wins the game. Now he starts to move his knight around. Now, I said at the time that I was happy about this move. Right? Because, what did I say? He's opened up G2. This is move 11. He's opened up G2. Right? Now what do we do? Now I move my rook there. Okay. Um, tax the knight. Which is a, you know, what Simon William calls, Williams calls a, an artificial threat. He's not really threatening much. And now I drop my bishop into the corner. And what did I say? I said, that bishop is going to be my sniper. Right? So this is the foundation of my plan. Knight comes around. I'm not bothered. But I push c5, partly in order to um, prevent the knight from coming in there, but also to give my queen a root hit there, where she couldn't she couldn't get there before because the bishop's guarding all this, right? So c5 has two purposes, partly prophylactic and partly attacking. Takes, takes... That's fine. Changes nothing, right? And then I noticed, oh, actually, I have a fork here. Okay, so my opponent pushes b3. That's that's one idea. I think also rook a to b1 would have been fine as well, so putting it on a semi-open file. Uh, and now queen here. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm poking around. I really, really want to put my queen onto this diagonal. I said so multiple times. Um... Obviously, this square I can't put it on right now, but right now the immediate concern is this. Okay, forcing move. My opponent has to do something. My opponent does, gives check. Sidestep. Now pushes a pawn. And now I go, hmm, because he's blocked off the diagonal of doom. So what do we do? Take it, right? I counted, and this is simple, you know, very, very basic. Uh, one, two, three attackers, okay? Then we had a long discussion about how to take it. I took it with a knight, knowing I was hanging this pawn. But this pawn is not the critical element of the game. In fact, if that pawn, if I could pick that pawn up and drop it off the floor, then I can put my rook here and, you know, maybe there's ideas about attacking his queen. Maybe I could pin the knight of the bishop on that file, who knows. So he takes, and I take with the pawn, right? Now, I haven't. It's almost like We've both forgotten about this bishop, right? We want to leave the bishop in the corner. I don't want to start moving my bishop and reminding my opponent that the bishop's there. I want to leave the bishop there. So I take with the pawn. Although I'm blocking off my own diagonal of doom, I've got ideas about pushing the pawn there and reopening the diagonal of doom. Okay? He takes the pawn. whoopie doo, Right? Rook, rook f e a. Bishop moves away again. You see this comes with tempo, Right? Now I grab a free pawn, attacking his other rook. Okay, forcing move. He has to do something about it. Okay, there. Then I come up here and attack this bishop. 
right? It's another forcing move. So my opponent is here spending a sequence of turns avoiding or getting out of the threats that I'm throwing at him. Okay? So he's blocking my punches. He's got to move. And he's quite often moving pieces in a way um, that he may not prefer to do. So now he moves his queen to defend the bishop. That's okay. Right? Um, but now it means that this queen has a job to do because the threat is still there. So now this queen is tied to the defense of the bishop. She has to stay on a square where she can nursemaid and look after that bishop. And now I push the pawn and this creates a weakness which I didn't notice, which is that. Okay, so I'm threatening his bishop. He retreats. So in fact here, he could have played that straight away and more material, right? However, decides to save the bishop, and now threats, threat to DT, right? Bang, and here, you know, these central pawns, and he's got no pawns on CDE, no pawns at all. His pawns are there, AB, and then FGH, right? I've got this central pawn mass, and I'm using it, right? I'm, it's, it's, it's a rolling maul, I am, if, if you watch rugby union, right? rolling more, I'm moving up the board and I'm forcing his pieces to run away in fright. Okay. Now, the key move, queen c, c6. And you have to say to yourself, why did my opponent make that move? Okay. Now I said to myself, oh no, his queen is guarding g2. Okay. Did my opponent say that to himself? Right? Why did my opponent make that move? Well, he's now got a queen and a bishop lined up against a very sensitive square. So my opponent here could have maybe played f3 at any time. If pawn takes, bishop takes, threat's gone. Yeah? And now I'm attacking his queen and the bishop behind it. Okay? Bishop there, good. This is all good. This is fine. All right? I counter with a threat of my own, so, so he sees something good. Um... And this, this is nice because it's kind of an intermediate move, right? In between move, in a sense. Because he thinks, well, look, I, I can take this anyway. Right? But in fact, uh, if he'd have taken the rook, that would have forced me to recapture anyway because it comes with check. And then he could still have done that. So either way around, doesn't really matter. Problem is with this move is that when I recapture with a pawn, right? I've, I've cleared Eddie. Eddie gone. Right? And now I said to myself, I said to myself, he cannot move his queen away from the defense of g2 because my diagonal of doom is open for business. He does that. Bang. And 2.2 seconds, right? It's among the quickest moves that he made in the entire game and it was catastrophic. Okay. But I think that was a very, very interesting game and i hope it's a very very useful lesson for uh, mikhil 6969 um so thank you my friend for uh for that the reason why i played him by the way or her um is because they are in my chess bootcamp club on uh, chess.com so something i'll do if i have some time i'll go onto the club and say is anyone free for you know a a, a training video a training game and uh you know this this member stepped forward we've only got at this time we've got less than 200 people on there so you know if if you want to uh, do a game like this and get get my input on on your play then um join the club you know it's that's what we're there for chess bootcamp is all about helping people to improve it's all there for the love of the game no, I don't make any money from it. You know, this is it's just all, you know, I love chess. I expect you love chess. And that's it. So there you go. Yeah, come along and join the camp, if you the Chess Book Camp Club, if, if you fancy that. Um, otherwise, I hope the video has been useful. Thanks for watching. See you later.